Hey, what's up you guys? This is a Kaggle code review show and I'm Ilarian Garbazov. Today we'll do the new Kaggle competition with the nature language processing. The name of the competition is Real Anat. Nature language processing with disaster tweets. Let's do it! So I want to introduce you to the competition NLP with disaster tweets. At this competition, we would predict which tweets are about real disasters and which ones are not. So uh, the competition description is uh, on the uh, kaggle.com and Twitter has become an important communication channel in times of emergency. So uh, we want to uh, uh, predict on uh, the different tweets with uh, NLP uh, predictions. Is it about the disaster or not? And you can read the description on the kaggle.com. So that is uh, about uh, the description. Let's uh, look uh, to the data. Uh, so what should I expect the data format to be? It's the text of a tweet, a keyword from uh, that tweet, and uh, the location uh, the tweet was sent from. And we are predicting, uh, is it uh, a disaster so it's uh, the target is one and uh, it's if it's not a disaster the target would be zero the files are trained csv test csv and the sample submission a sample submission file in the uh, correct format so the columns is id a unique uh, identifier for the tweet text text of the tweet location keyword and the target as i uh, told you As usual, I uh, found the uh, kernel on the kaggle.com and I found one of the most commented one. It's from, uh, it's called the NLP with disaster tweets EBA cleaning and bird. So we would use the bird model uh, for predicting uh, the disaster on the target. And uh, I found it uh, from the Gunas Eviton. Uh, Gunas Eviton is a machine learning engineer at a medical company at Turkey, at Ankara. So thank you, Gunas Eviton, for the uh, kernel. For the uh, code review, we would use the uh, Google Collab because it's very comfortable, easy to share, and uh, we can use GPU as our runtime. Let's check it. So we would use the GPU. Okay. So first of all, uh, we uh, need to load uh, the tokenization uh, classes from the bird uh, in uh, Pippin style uh, sentence piece. Uh, import uh, garbage collector, import uh, res. This model provides regular expression matching operations. Import string, a collection of string constants. Import operator, uh, this model experts a set of functions corresponding to the uh, intrinsic operations, uh, operators of Python. From collections, uh, we need to import default dictionary. This model implements specialized container data types, providing alternatives to Python's general purpose built in containers. We would use uh, standard libraries for uh, the uh, Python analysis, uh, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Cber. We would import the tokenization. Uh, from word cloud, we would uh, import stop words. It's a word cloud object for generating and drawing. We would uh, import a scalar model selection uh, and we would import uh, from it, we would import stratified k fold and stratified uh, shuffle split. From uh, a scalar matrix, uh, we would in, uh, import uh, the matrix, precision, recall, and a fun score. We would use TensorFlow. Uh, we would uh, import Keras uh, and the optimizers, SGD and a a ADEM optimizer. We would import layers, dense, uh, input, dropout, uh, global average pooling. We would uh, import a uh, sequential model and uh, we would uh, use the callbacks. So the model checkpoint, uh, the stopping uh, and the callbacks. 
uh, we, uh, to load uh, data uh, from the competition to Google Collab, uh, we would use uh, Kaggle API. Uh, so we need to upload the Kaggle JSON file, use the Kaggle API, see the competition list, and uh, the, com uh, the competition name is uh, uh, NL uh, NLP getting started. So uh, we need to load the data. Here it is. Then we need to unzip it. We're refreshing it. Uh, then we need to unzip it, uh, read uh, CSV files from uh, the content, train CSV, the test CSV, and see the shapes of uh, the training and uh, test datasets. The shape of the training dataset is uh, 7613. Five features in the training uh, data set. So uh, the test uh, set is 3263 and four features without target because we need to predict the target. Each sample in the training test set has the following information. So, as I told you earlier, it's the um, text of a tweet, the location, the keyword, the ID of the uh, tweet, and the target. Uh, it's in the train uh, data set. So both training and test set have the uh, same ratio of uh, missing values. So it, uh, as you see, it got the missing values. And uh, the missed values are uh, in keyword feature and uh, in the location feature. So it's uh, in location feature, it's 33%, as you see. Since uh, missing value ratios between training and test set are too close, they are uh, most probably taken from the same uh, distribution, uh, the same sample, and missing values in those features uh, will fill with no keyword and no location, respectively. So you see the uh, distribution of uh, missing values uh, in training and test set, and you see that it is the same. So uh, we would fill an A uh, with uh, no location, no keyword, respectively. Uh, locations are not automatically generated, they are user inputs. Uh, so that's why locations is very dirty and it's got many unique values. Uh, fortunately, there is signal in keyword because some of those words can only be used in one context. Keywords have very different tweet counts and target means. So keyword can be used as a feature by itself or as a word uh, added to the text. Every single keyword in training set exists in test set. If training and test set are from the same sample, it's also possible to use target encoding on keyword. Okay, so the number of unique values in keyword is uh, 222 in training and the uh, test data sets. So uh, you see that it may be um, from the same distribution and uh, the number of unique values uh, in location uh, are not the same because uh, uh cause uh, they're not uh, automatically generated okay so we accounted with a uh, number of uniques uh from the training and test uh, data sets so uh you see the uh, target distribution keywords and you see the different keywords uh used in uh prediction in the target distribution in keywords so you see all the distributions uh, between the keywords and the target. Okay. Let's go next. So we can uh, make a meta features uh, for our um, train uh, and test data sets and uh, distributions of meta features in classes and data sets can be helpful to identify the disaster tweets. It could be additional features uh, and the meta features used for this analysis are a uh, number of words in text, it uh, would be word count, number of unique words in text, it's a unique word count, number of stop words in text, stop word count, 
number of uh, URLs uh, in text, its URL count, every charity count in a word, mean word length, uh, number of characters in text, char count, number of punctuations uh, in text, punctuation count, number of hashtags and number of uh, mentions, hashtag count and uh, mention count respectively. So uh, here you see that we used apply and lambda function and uh, we uh, add different uh, meta features to our train and test uh, data sets. So here how uh, we're doing it with different uh, lambda functions. Uh, all of the meta features have very similar distributions in training and test set, which also proves that training and test set that are taken from the same sample. All of the meta features have information about target as well, but some of them are not good enough, such as uh, the count of URL and hashtags and the mention count. On uh, the other hand, we have a very good uh, meta features. Uh, and these features uh, might be useful in uh, in modeling, in predicting the target, uh, the disaster it or not. So we can see the distributions between uh, the uh, in training and test uh, data set between the target, not disaster and disaster, and uh, distributions of our different uh, meta features we plotted uh, uh, here. So we see uh, that we have the normal distribution and uh, in uh, predicting the target, so you see it on the left, and uh, in distribution or uh, in training and test set distribution, so you see. And some of the features are good uh, for predicting and uh, some are not, so you'll see. Uh, the, the hashtag, the mention count are not uh, good uh, for predicting uh, the uh, target. Okay, let's uh, go next and uh, see how, uh, what is the relation between the target and uh, different n-grams. Uh, so the class distributions are 57% for zero, not disaster, and 43% um, for one, uh, the disaster. So the classes are almost equally separated, so they don't require any stratification by target in cross-validation. Uh, and you see it uh, here, so the target distribution and the target count in training set. So uh, we, uh, right now, uh, want to see how uh, the what is the relationship between the n grams and the target, and we uh, would use the uh, unigrams that are most frequently uh, used in the tweets b grams uh, and three grams. So here, how we will do it? We would tokenize uh, and we would exclude the stop words. Uh, we would tokenize uh, the tweets and uh, use it uh, to see the relationship. Okay. So let's start with the unigrams. Uh, and we, uh, we would see that the most common unigrams exist in both classes are mostly punctuations, stop words, or numbers, and we would exclude it. For the predicting, it's better to clean them. Most common uh, unigrams in disaster tweets are already giving information about the disasters. It is very hard to use some of those words in other contexts. And uh, most common unigrams in non-disaster tweets are verbs. This makes sense because most of the uh, sentences have information active structure. So you see the top uh, 100 most common unigrams in disaster tweets are uh, fire, like suicide, disaster, police, killed, and uh, for non-disaster tweets, it's like will, new, now, one, body, people, love, no, see. So that's how it look like, uh, the histogram. Let's do the same for the big grams. And there are no common uh, big grams exist in both classes because when we use the big grams, uh, the context is clear, 
and the most common big grams in disaster tweets are giving more information about the disasters uh, than unigrams. Uh, if we would uh, exclude the punctuation. Uh, and most common big grams in non disaster tweets are mostly about Reddit or YouTube. So you can see the uh, histogram uh, among the big grams in disaster tweets and uh, non disaster tweets. So in disaster, it's like suicide bomber oil spill, California wildfire, and the most common in non-disaster tweets, it's about the YouTube, YouTube, body bag, full read, will now. And let's do the same for the three grams, okay? Just the same as uh, uh, for B grams, there are no common three grams exist in both classes. Most common trigrams in disaster tweets are very similar to bigrams. They give lots of information about the disasters, but uh, they may not provide any additional information along with bigrams. So most common trigrams in non-disaster tweets are also very similar uh, to bigrams in non-disaster tweets. And you, uh, you can see the histogram right now. Okay. I would share the Google call app and you can uh, do it by yourself. You can see it and you can uh, compile the whole uh, Google call app. Okay, let's talk about the embeddings and the text cleaning. Mm, so when you have uh, pre-trained embeddings, uh, like uh, we have uh, the embeddings from the Stanford University called the GLOVE 300D. Uh, so doing standard pre-processing steps might not be a good idea uh, because some of the valuable information can be lost. And it's better to get uh, the vocabulary of the um, training and the validation uh, data sets as close to embeddings as possible. In order to do that, uh, let's uh, train uh, vocab and test uh, vocab uh, as trained. So the tech cleaning is based on the embeddings uh, below. It's um, based on the uh, GLOVE. It's an uh, unsupervised learning algorithm for obtaining vector representations for words. And it's made by the Stanford University. And uh, you can uh, see the links to uh, this uh, embedding. We would uh, load the uh, embedding to Google Colab, unzip it. Uh, so it's in the text version, so we need to load it. And you uh, can see that the wall time is uh, three minutes and you can do it uh, much faster. Uh, by using the pickle version of Glove. So that's how you can use it. And what's in the intersection of vocab uh, and uh, vocabulary and the embeddings are stored in cover along with their comms. Words uh, in vocab that don't exist in embeddings are stored in uh, cov along with their comms. And uncovered and NOV are total number of counts and they are used for calculating coverage percentage of uh, the tweets. Uh, by the embeddings. Uh, and uh, the both GLOVE uh, and fast text embeddings have more than 50% uh, vocabulary and 80% uh, text coverage without cleaning. So that's how we use it. Uh, you can see uh, the code. And uh, the main uh, that it's uh, the GLOVE embedding cover 50% uh, of vocabulary and 82% uh, of uh, text and training set. So it's uh, not the best result and uh, we need uh, to do the text cleaning and uh, right now we'll do uh, we'll define the function uh, of the text cleaning. So tweets require lots of cleaning but it's uh, inefficient to clean every single tweet by hand so it uh, would take a lot of time much time. A general approach must be implemented uh, for cleaning. So the general approach is the most common type of words that require cleaning uh, have punctuations at the start of uh, or and special characters that are attached to words are removed, contractions are expanded, rules are removed, character entity reference are replaced. Uh, 
uh, uh, symbols are replaced with the acronyms. Find the hashtags and usernames contain lots of information about the context, but they are written without spaces, so we would correct it. And after defining uh, the um, cleaning function, a cleaning of the uh, tweets uh, data set, so you see we'll uh, do all the uh, job, uh, all, all the cleaning job automatically. And as you see, uh, we would, uh, we're cleaning special characters, contractions, uh, character entity references, uh, type of slang, informal abbreviations, hashtags, and usernames in all the tweets. So it's a lot of job that uh, we do automatically for uh, the whole data set. The URLs, words with punctuations, acronyms. Uh, and uh, after the cleaning, we can uh, see the similarity of the globe em embeddings and it cover, uh, it uh, raised the covering, uh, cover. It's uh, now 82%. And 97%, 82% uh, of vocabulary, and 97% of uh, the whole text in training and test data sets. So it's after cleaning the tweets, uh, uh, the embeddings are deleted and garbage collected because they consume too much memory. So it's, uh, it's a big embeddings, okay? And uh, after the cleaning, uh, it's better to make the vocabulary. Okay. The author of the uh, kernel found for out that there are 18 unique tweets uh, in training set which are labeled uh, differently. So we need to correct it and uh, we can correct it. So finally, our uh, training dataset would uh, look like ID, keyword, location, text, target, word count, unique word count, stop word count, URL count, mean wor uh, word length, char count, punctuation count, hashtag, mention count, the clean text, and uh, the target relabeled. So it's uh, uh, all our feature engineering. So, and uh, we can uh, start uh, the cross validation. And first of all, when the training test sets are concatenated and tweet counts by keyword are computed, it can seem that the training and test set are split inside keyword groups. We can also come to that conclusion by uh, looking at ID feature. Uh, this means every keyword are stratified while creating training and test set. We can replicate the same split uh, for cross-validation and tweets for every keyword group exist in both training and test set. And uh, uh, they are from the same sample. In order to replicate the same split technique, stratify k fold is used and keyword is passed as a, a target, is y. So st uh, stratification is, is done based on the keyword feature. Shuffle is set to true for extra training diversity. Uh, both folds have tweets for every keyword group in training and validation sets, which can be seen from below. So uh, we have got uh, two uh, key fold, uh, two uh, splits, a random state is seed and uh, shuffle. So th that would be our parameters at the stratified key fold. And the uh, disaster is a target uh, with a label one. And we can uh, for fold in enumerate, uh, we can uh, see the shapes. So the whole training set shape is, uh, as you remember, 7000. The uh, whole training set unique keyword, as you remember, is 222. And uh, the whole training set target rate is uh, 3000 uh, for the disaster and 4,000 for non-disaster. And when we split it uh, by stratify k fold, so uh, for the fold one training set shape would be 3,000, and the validation set would be uh, 3,800. Fold one for the training set unique would, uh, would be the same as in the uh, 
with the whole training set. And uh, for the validation set, it uh, would be the same too. The same uh, would be for the second fold. So we we would hold a unique query count, okay, for uh, the two folds. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the most delicious part of the kernel, it's the model. And we need to uh, describe the metrics. So we've got accuracy, precision, recalled, F1 score, uh, that uh, harmonic mean of the precision and recall. And uh, we uh, can find uh, all of these metrics in uh, the Keras model. And uh, we would define the callbacks for our model. So here we define the uh, callbacks and how uh, it would be uh, in our classification report. And uh, on the epoch end, we would print it, all the uh, metrics, okay? Then uh, this model uh, uses the implementation of BERG from the TensorFlow models uh, from the GitHub repository. We can uh, do it in uh, simple. Uh, it's we can simple do it in the Google Colab, and uh, it uses uh, twelve hidden layers and uh, the hidden size of uh, seven hundred sixty-eight and uh, tension heads of twelve. Uh, this model has been uh, pre-trained for uh, English on the Wikipedia. Inputs have been uh, uncased, meaning that the text has been low cased before tokenization into word pieces and any accent markers have been stripped. In order to download this model, uh, we uh, simply uh, can uh, use uh, uh, GitHub uh, and uh, use the Keras layer and uh, load the bird the bird model so the architecture of our model uh, would be in the disaster detector class that incorporates the cross-validation and uh, the uh, metrics stated above so we would use the tokenization of input text is performed with a full tokenizer class from uh, the bird and the Parameters such as uh, learning rate, epochs, and batch size can be used for controlling the learning process. There are no dense or pooling layers added after last layer of BERG. Uh, and SGD is used as optimizer since others have hard time while converging. And we would plot the accuracy at the end. We would plot the accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score for the training and validation sets after each epoch. And you can see this, that we use the bird layer. And uh, learning control parameters. Uh, what else? So the in the model we use the bird, uh, the a dense layer for with a sigmoid activation for the prediction zero one. The optimizer would be SGD with the learning rate and the momentum 0.8. And uh, as a loss, we would use the binary cross entropy and accuracy metrics. Uh, we've got a stratified K fold with the two folds and all the metrics stated above. And uh, we are defining the uh, learning curve and we would plot it for the validation. Uh, we would plot the accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score for each fold. So, uh, we need to train the model. It's uh, not as, um, it's a lot of time. So we're using Barrett layer, max uh, length one 
28, a uh, low, uh, low learning rate, 10 epochs, and uh, 32 uh, in, um, in every batch. So we need, uh, we're training the model. And you can see in, uh, we're start, starting with the fault zero. And you see that accuracy is going better and better each epoch. And uh, for the, uh, the last accuracy for epoch 10 on the uh, fault number zero is 86. And uh, for fault number uh, one, uh, last uh, epoch 10, it's 87. So here you see uh, that we're uh, plotting the learning curve and uh, accuracy is going uh, for the fault number zero is going each uh, epoch better and better. So we avoid the learning problem. And the validation loss is, is low. It's getting low and low. Uh, not the same for the uh, second fold, for the fold number one, so you see, but the loss is going down and uh, going for the, to the plateau. And uh, we, uh, after we trained the model, uh, we trained it with the accuracy 87 at the end, we can I make the predictions and contribute it uh, to the Kaggle. So that was uh, the NLP with the disaster tweets where we used cleaning uh, and embeddings and the bird model. And uh, the final accuracy rate uh, that we've got was 87%. Uh, percent. So if you like it, push the like button. If you like the video, push the like button, subscribe and see you next video.